Group uh, two three is uh, related to the cube as well as uh, remember uh, four three two, but the four three two was more octagonal uh, symmetry, where uh, you know this one is more tetrahedral uh, symmetry. But they're both related to more or less a lot of the highly symmetric uh, cubic systems that we know and love from many crystal systems. Of course, that means with such high symmetry, uh, drawing the motifs is difficult. So I will leave it to you to look at the that overall table that we had. I won't try to, in this work here, reproduce all of those uh, uh, those motifs. So we won't have any motifs here. We'll just basically sketch out the original um, symmetries and then we'll work from there. Now remember the uh, way that this worked was that we had cube like this and we had these 111 if this is the center here right we had uh, the case of a um, two-fold axis only. So even though I've drawn a cube here, it's only two-fold symmetry on the motif. But the re reason I've drawn a cube here is that the the way to think about it was that we had these two three-fold axes, and the angles between these are related to the crystallographic direction over the this is like between two 111 planes, and this is between a uh, 110 and uh, sorry, an, an 001 directly up there, and you know, for, um, a 111. So this is 55 degrees between the 11 plane and the normal. So this was the uh, uh, the two three uh, combination allowed by our axial combination in three dimensions, and uh, the. Excuse the little one hair there. I'm probably sympathetic to myself. <laughs> Balding men with uh, very few little hairs on top add them wherever they can. Um, so uh, if if you recall the way this looks, then and you could tell if I'm looking down on this, you know what I would see is this is the Halloween. Remember, I have twofold coming out of each one of these faces. So this is the Halloween, you know, we call the jack-o'-lantern uh, uh, type uh, one. And then we had, coming out of the corners, we had uh, the one-fold axes. And so we have, you know, to guide the eye here, we have the two-fold axis going through there, the two-fold axis, you know, going through there, the one coming straight out at me. And you know a threefold X is kind of uh, coming out of there. So what happens then when we add well if you look at the if you look at the motifs on there you'll notice just like our other motifs we started off with just with the axial combination if there's no higher symmetry what often happens is like if there's two-fold symmetry like this you know there could be a collection of three-fold motifs here and they're only on one side of the sphere they're not on the reverse side right and then uh, uh, the same thing here there, it would be on the opposite so there'd be like these collection of motifs on the opposite side over there and that's the nature of, you notice, every one we've done so far, when we add the, the, the horizontal plane, all it's doing is taking, you know, if we call this quadrant red, this green, this red, this green, then it's reflecting them back and forth, making this red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. And that's exactly what happens here. So like anything that was on this sphere, let's say was up, I'll just draw it by, um, you know, drawing, a, let's suppose I had you know, some motif that represented that, and that was here. The original one would have, let's say, the motif on the back side of the of the sphere, for example. And of course, afterwards, when we put the mirror plane in, um, 
it converts all these so that all surfaces have the same threefold symmetry elements on them. Okay? So I said I wouldn't draw a motif, but I'm not. I'm not drawing a full motif. I'm just giving you an example of how this was, you know, red, green, red, green, and now they're all red, green, 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 right? So they're all just like before. You get highly symmetric because this guy reflects everything. And of course, what that means is the usual thing. We end up with mirror planes here, mirror planes here. And um, what that means is that each one of these twofold axes is like a 2mm. Don't forget. You know, we've been saying that before in other similar things. So the other thing we noticed um, also is that when we have this, remember we have a twofold axis, right, coming out at me, and we have this perpendicular plane, which means there's going to be an inversion center in there. So we're going to have that inversion center. Uh, what that means is that these threefold axes are passing through uh, this inversion center. And it turns out that, uh, therefore, they have this, uh, this uh, inversion center in them as well. So I won't redraw this because, you know, I've got the mirror planes in there. The two-fold axes are still there. The inversion is in the middle, and it makes the three-fold axes have the little dots in them because they're inverted. Um, and essentially, uh, remember that, um, you know, since we have this, this is a three-bar, right? And... Uh, remember well, that uh, these guys are so it's not surprising that you would call this two over m three bar. Now I need you to remember this so I don't have to redo it on the next page because we're going to take two three again, but now we're going to do a diagonal plane. So very quickly, I'm just going to draw what we know and love now as our 2-3, the Halloween mask. For the eye, we're drawing the two-fold axes. We won't bother to show you the three-fold axes because it'll clutter it up. So now we're going to try to slip this diagonal through here. So again, this is a great circle, but I'm going to show it as a line. It's 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 passing, it's cutting through here and going through those threefold axes, and of course that means that um, you know I will have it going through here too. Now remember that these triangles are going to take those mirror planes and rotate them. Uh, you know, every 120 degrees, right? So you have to be thinking down here, this thing's going to rotate it. So you're going to end up with like a mirror plane. Now I'm drawing this in 3D. You know, there's the circle that kind of, you know, goes like, like that, right? And then you're going to have ones that go... Hopefully you can see how that would work like that. So a lot of mirror planes. But what doesn't happen is that um, these mirror planes are not uh, perpendicular. So what I don't end up with is a, is a 2M structure. And that means that there's no inversion there in exactly. I'll come back to that in a minute. But these, so these threefold axes look like they're going to stay... Uh, normal, right? Um, however, there is one thing that we haven't brought up, but if you go back and listen to the last lectures, you know, one shortcut, we didn't bother to do a combination theorem for it, but when we have this diagonal uh, line pass through a two-fold axis, 
and you can you can think about it right because the way it reflects things around um, it would induce a roto inversion uh, so when a diagonal like this passes through uh, here it produces a roto inversion so what we then have is this gets converted into that and the same would be for these as well they all get converted these stay the same but these all get converted into roto inversion axes so three will stay the same because nothing changes to them we have a four bar which is a roto inversion and we have mirror planes And so there's our four bar 3M. So going back to our master diagram, that master table, we've taken our two, three, and you can see here, here's the motif from what I was telling you about how you see here, there's a, uh, uh, in this case, they put it in the back. So that would be green by our drawing and then red, green and red, right? So it's not on every surface, but uh, when you put in the horizontal plane, you go, you know, dot within circle, dot within circle. That's what those all are. And the resulting stereographic projection we talked about. And then um, in 4 bar 3M, uh, we kind of showed you through this pattern and didn't bother. You can prove that these are roto inversion axes by looking at these things in your spare time for fun on the weekend. <laughs>